we are ready to dive into trigonometric identities. And before we do that, I have a three-part series coming. But before we do that, I'd like to go through this video on how to derive the Pythagorean identities. These are, of course, the identities that involve the Pythagorean theorem. And you can see that the main one right here kind of looks like a squared plus b squared equals c squared, sort of. And these two are very similar to that as well. So what we're going to do is go through and figure out how to get these three things, right? And then once we do that, then we'll make connections to uh, this slide as we move forward. This is a slide of, uh, of verifying trig identities, some, some guidelines to follow. All right, and then we'll get to uh, this slide, which is uh, not just the Pythagorean identities, but some more that we can use as we verify. So consider this the sort of precursor to the three-part identity series. And as we go through this, right, to get these three identities, there are basically two ways to do it. There's the way of the Pythagorean theorem, and then there's the way of the circle equation. Now these are not actually two different ways, right? Because the circle equation is itself a derivative of the Pythagorean theorem. But I'll show you both ways, because while they are the, basically the same, they do kind of look different. So. Of course, we know that our Pythagorean theorem starts as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? And our circle equation, well, our circle equation is a little bit less known. It's x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared, where h comma k is our center. That's our center. And r, of course, is our radius. All right, so we are going to, and you can already kind of see that this is sort of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So they look the same. They're basically the same thing. Let's go through this, and we'll start with the, uh, the left-hand side here with the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so the identities stem from, of course, the unit circle, right? And we've looked at the unit circle a lot in the past few videos here. Uh, basically what the unit circle is, it's a circle that has a radius of 1. So that's a 1. This is 1, right? This is a radius. And as we talk about the unit circle, we always sort of come back to these key points, right? These points that are on the terminal side of these kind of special angles, right? In other words, this is 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians, this angle right here. Which means that this point has very, very specific coordinates. All right, and those coordinates come from our special right triangle. So if we go back and think about, okay, this, let's call this the x coordinate from here to here. And of course, this would be the y coordinate. To get those coordinates, all we would have to do is go back to our days of special right triangles. So we have 30 degrees, we have 1, and let's say we wanted to figure out x and y. What you would do is you can either, you can use just regular SOHCAHTOA or you can go back to your 30, 60, 90 specials and understand that the ratio between these, the extended ratio between these sides is 1, 1 radical 3, and 2, which means the side across from 30 degrees, whatever it is, the side across from 60, you take that and multiply it by radical 3. The hypotenuse is twice as big, it's twice as big as the 30 degree side. In other words, the, the side that's across from 30 degree angle. So, in our unit circle, our hypotenuse is already 1. That's set in stone. Half of 1 would be 1 half. And then the 60 degree side, or the side across from the 60 degree angle, is 1 half times radical 3, or radical 3 over 2. All right, so 
the side across from 30 degrees is 1 half, and across from 60 degrees is radical 3 over 2. That corresponds to this point. The x is radical 3 over 2, and the y is 1 half. Now, let's make a connection between sine and cosine. Right? Instead of using the special right triangles, we could also use and talk about sine and cosine in here, and tangent, of course. The sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Well, the sine of 30 degrees then would be 1 half over the hypotenuse, which is just 1 half. So the sine of the angle is the y value. The sine of the angle is the y value. And that's extremely important. This is the y value. The cosine of the angle, cosine of 30 degrees, well, cosine, if you remember, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be radical 3 over 2 over 1, which is just radical 3 over 2. And that's the x value. Right? So here we have the cosine of the angle, and here we have the sine of the angle. Cosine is radical 3 over 2. Sine is 1 half. All right, so we can sort of replace x and y with cosine and sine. Right? In this specific example with 30 degrees, sine is 1 half, cosine is radical 3 over 2. All right? But the general formula is that the x-coordinate is cosine and the y-coordinate is sine. So as we begin to uh, sort of make connections here, right, if we think about this right triangle and we apply the Pythagorean theorem to it, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, well c squared of course is our hypotenuse. a and b are just the two legs of the right triangle, well they're sine and cosine, doesn't matter what order we put them in. There you go. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1 squared. 1 squared is just 1, so there is your main Pythagorean identity. Now, quick notation here. Uh, if you notice, I kind of did a little trick. right? Sine x squared would be how you would start it. But sine x squared is just sine x times sine x, sine x times itself. But the conventional way to write that in trig is to put the 2 right there. All right, so this and this are identical in trigonometry. Okay, so there's your main Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So that's where we get this first one from right here. Okay. Now the other two come uh, come from sort of derivations of that first one. In other words, these two are directly related to the first one. So let's see how that works. All right, I'll take that first one and I'll just bring it down here. All right? And notice we're using alphas it doesn't matter what angle you use. Those are just Greek letters. So here we have the original Pythagorean identity, which we just derived. Let's say that you wanted to, for some crazy reason, to divide every term by sine squared alpha. Just out of the blue, you decided that this might have been something that you wanted to do. If you were to do that, this is just 1. This is, let's see, cosine over sine. Cosine over sine we've defined already as cotangent. So this would be cotangent squared x. Cotangent squared x. And 1 over sine we've defined as cosecant. But this is 1 over sine squared, so it's cosecant squared. All right, so there is your second version. I guess your third. All right, 1 plus cotangent squared of an angle is equal to the cosecant squared of that same angle. Let's do the, sec the second one now. 
let's say you wanted to take your original formula again, sine squared x plus cosine squared x. This is your original Pythagorean identity. And let's say we wanted to, for some crazy reason this time, divide by cosine squared x. So divide all three terms by the same thing. You're certainly allowed to do that. This turns into, let's see, sine over cosine. I know that that's tangent. So this would be tangent squared. This is something over itself. That's just 1, so plus 1. 1 over cosine, I know, is secant. But there's a squared there, so it's secant squared. All right, and that's my other version. Right? That's the middle version right here. So there you go. You start with this one from Pythagorean theorem. Unit circle, so Katoa. And then you can get that one by dividing and get this one by dividing. So let's go through the, uh, the right-hand side now. All right, let's make a connection with the actual formula for a circle. So we said that the formula for a circle right here is basically the Pythagorean theorem, and it is. But I'll show you that there's a slight, there's kind of a slight difference here between uh, kind of how we derive them. So we know that in a unit circle, right, we have our radius of 1. Right? So right away, over here, I'm going to put 1 in for r, 1 squared, which is just 1. The center of the unit circle, of course, is 0, 0. So h comma k is 0 comma 0. So x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals 1. The zeros can cancel, so we're just x squared plus y squared equals 1. All right, this is the equation of the unit circle. In other words, that's how we can get all of these points out here on the unit circle. That's where they're all coming from. Pretty simple stuff, right? And we just talked about the fact that x, well, that's the cosine. So if we square that, we get cosine squared x. The y, well, that's the sine. So if we square that, we get sine squared x is equal to 1. Well, there we go. That is the Pythagorean identity. Notice it doesn't matter what order these are in, because addition's commutative. So there you go. You have two different sort of versions on how to get the same identities, right? And these three are going to be really, really important as we move forward into our verifications. We're going to use those a lot to, um, to verify other identities, more complicated ones, right? So in other words, anytime we see sine squared plus cosine squared, we can replace it with 1. Anytime we see secant squared of an angle, we can replace it with this, or vice versa. Anytime we see 1 plus cotangent squared of an angle, we can replace it with this, or vice versa. So they're pretty powerful. And we're going to use them like crazy over the, over the next three videos. So uh, look forward to those. Thanks for watching.